Welcome back to the 120 acre wood. Today I'm going to take you on a little bit of an adventure. But first I'm going to start this video with a special shout out and a thank you to my slice of heaven outdoors. They, they gave me a shout out the other day and uh, it really helped my channel out a bit and I just want to say thanks and uh, I enjoyed your content. I really appreciate what you've done so anyway thanks and let's move to the a little bit of an adventure uh, of course everybody that knows I got something to show you here uh, everybody that knows my channel you saw, you saw the the farm all H rebuild on Clyde and of course Bonnie behind me here um, the second farm all that we bought and uh, so, you know, if you joined because of the tractors and stuff, this is, uh, as you can remember, maybe from one of our other videos, uh, the update video that we had just did, um, I was talking about the disc harrow that we have, that I was saying it was a little bit too big for me to pull with the farm all H and so we would kind of been looking around and looking around for a tractor that we could probably try to pull it with um, we did some searching some looking we found something that needs a little bit of work uh, we ended up getting kind of a package deal I guess uh, we got two of them so I'm going to go ahead and turn you around and I'll show you those tractors. Uh, excuse my, my hood and stuff, it's a little bit cold out here. It was 10 below this morning. We're up around 8 degrees now. Uh, of course I had to chip water for the animals again, but hopefully once we get the pens built I'll be able to do a little bit of something to keep that from happening. I mean, we are off grid, so electricity really isn't going to be much of an option. So, anyway, I'll show you what we got here. So, first up is this. It is a 1944 John Deere Model A. And if you look, it does have dual wheels. I don't know if it is, it's got homemade concrete wheel weights. Uh, I would say that this thing's probably about, each one of those is maybe about a thousand pounds. It's pretty heavy. Uh, there's something else I got to show you on it. Like I said, it's a 44, I believe. I'm, I'd have to look at the serial number and trace it again. The other one's a 51, but I'll show you that one in a minute. Concrete wheel weights. It is a John Deere A. I don't know if it's the what what was it the F and H or whatever um, dual wheel kit but she's been worked over a little bit uh, if you look up there you can kinda see that there's a rag joint in the steering and if you know anything about them they didn't originally come with a rag joint so I'll show you here. A 44 would be a styled A, which means it has the whole front dressing. Well, this one doesn't. If you look, somebody's kind of homemade a wide front. It does turn over, um, 
lady I bought it from said she never has heard it run. Her dad bought it as a project. Her dad was actually kind of famous around the area. I'm not going to tell you who they are or anything because of privacy reasons, but got some homemade wheels on it. They were cut and welded in some centers and stuff. And over here, this one was dueled out. She doesn't know what happened to the other wheel. She said it was somewhere around there, but she couldn't find it. Her dad had passed away and this stuff was just sitting and there was a bunch of old cars and stuff out there too. This one is a 1951 or two John Deere G. And it is a styled, of course. Missing some of the the tins, but and it does have that rotational front end. I don't know if you can see it or not. The lighting isn't that great, but uh, it does have that rotational front end. Kind of a suspension system. <clears throat> this one turns over as well. She said this one did run. Her dad was driving it around and stuff. But when he got sick, they, they just got left alone and but I picked them up for a good price and I just decided to use them for trying to pull that old disc a little bit of work we'll be working on those in future videos of course there's a bird's nest on the carburetor I got to pull the carburetors out and rebuild them. I got a magneto on the A that needs to be rebuilt. This one has the points ignition. This one is a 12 volt system. It's got a 12 volt charging system on it. It's got a 12 volt starter. The A, there's the magneto. The A was actually converted over to 12 volt as well. It's got a homemade generator bracket and all that stuff. Need to put brakes on it, go through the clutches. The clutches are not good on them. Of course the wheels rotten in these in the on the G. I need to get new wheels for it. They were liquid filled. They had the calcium chloride in, which notorious for rusting. This wheel is not in too bad a shape, but I don't know where the outer wheel is. More projects. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take you over and uh, we're gonna start our little adventure. We're gonna go over to the west side of the property and I'll show you what we're going to be looking at here. Um, the town of Warland where I live was uh, settled in about 1900 and the town was incorporated in about 1906. Um, and so in 1906, in fact on New Year's Day 1906, they, they started moving some of the buildings from the original town site across the river because it was frozen up. They actually uh, had mounted the, the buildings on skids and uh, slid them across the river when it was frozen up moved the town over so 
because they had come in from the the northwest side um, the original founder of Warland was actually out in California uh, and was working his way back this way to find some place to uh, to start a new life so anyway what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk over and I'll show you when we get there uh, the west side of the property something we kind of found it's just I guess on the other side of the western boundary of our property so hold on and we'll join up over there okay so out here we're walking along following a bit of a cow trail here and uh, I don't know if you can see it but right here is a steel fence post we're kind of over on the west border of our property I don't know how long this fence post has been here or anything like that but I did go and look and way out there I mean it's it's a long ways out there there's another fence post right straight in line to this directly south who put it here when it was put here I have no idea but anyway so we walk a little bit more west from that fence post and uh, right down inside of there that's the creek and of course the creek has changed directions and changed formation quite a bit throughout the years a long ways down in there that's the creek and if you follow it down that way that's the property over there and it eventually dumps into the Bighorn River. It all comes from all up there. But if you look, there's a piece of tin. What it was from exactly, I don't know. It's definitely cut into a particular shape and there's nails and stuff around it so it was covering something if you look right here there's a brick and I looked up brick manufacturers in the local area and uh, there was a brick manufacturer that had come here from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania back in the early 1900s. So, as you can maybe see, a little bit of a trail. And leads into, you see these rocks? These rocks are all mortared in where we just came through, get down in the level here, that would be probably the doorway. There's more rocks right there behind the sagebrush. It's an old house foundation probably when the first homesteaders came out here you can see all the rocks all stacked up and there's no signs of wood out here right there is where the door would be and then you got the rocks piled up right in there and 
of course there's a bunch of dirt and stuff now but you can see how it's all this would be the western wall of it and then of course this is open the creek through different flood seasons and stuff has come through and washed out the northern wall of this foundation down inside the snow there's some rocks down there there I did find a piece of glass some really old style glass and that's still down there in the snow this would be the east wall kind of a break in it right here but it doesn't look like there was even a really a floor in here but maybe dirt not sure I don't know if this was a house that somebody had built or what it was like I said the creek has washed it all the way on that north side there's another brick there's another brick most of the rocks are rocks that was taken out of the creek for the foundation there's another brick some broken brick <coughs> a couple more pieces these uh more full-size bricks they have kind of an indentation to them if you see and like I said I did a little bit of research and I found that there was a brick maker that had come out here from Philadelphia and he had made uh, a couple brick making facilities plants around the area because of the growth out here there's another piece of brick right there in the ground and there's another one and we're gonna go a little bit west of this straight across the creek over here on the north side of the creek over there toward the property there's a place where uh, there was a bunch of tin cans and so on there was a couple trees that were cut down and they were definitely cut down a long time ago let's walk a little bit south here and you can see there's kind of a tree that had gotten rotten and fallen over and right next to that is a hole in the ground I don't know what this was I'm kind of thinking it was possibly a root cellar but there's some more brick that was laying around this in different spots so kind of wondering you know if it was maybe a, a root cellar or something from some of the original homesteaders around around here Like I said, if you follow the creek straight back toward town, it dumps right off into the Bighorn River right next to the house that's still standing um, of the town's founder. Uh, 
it's now a uh, uh, part of a a ranch but yeah they uh, there's a mound of dirt in between where try to block the wind here but this is a mound of dirt here and it's right in between where right over in here was that hole in the ground there's the mound of dirt and right here is where that foundation is How long it was lived in, I don't know. There's really nobody around that could tell you anything about it. There might be stuff that's out here further, who knows, but uh, according to the everything I found about the brick maker, it would have been somewhere in the 19, 1908, 19 to 1913, I think it was, something like that. So, yeah, this was part of an original homestead out here. that's the adventure I wanted to take you guys on uh, kinda cool just something that we didn't anticipate seeing or anything like that we were just out walking around and found it um, never really heard anything from the original owner about it um, he did have some friends that knew about it some guys that I work with believe it or not but so yeah, just kind of cool. Uh, I'll uh, pan out this way. We're going back to our property here. Um, that's the southern end out there. I kind of had a sneak and hunch that there was something else out here at one time because if you look over on this side of the creek that side over there the north side there's a bunch of cottonwood trees and it doesn't look like it from here but there's a bunch of them right over there and the majority of them are perfectly in a row. And I would have thought, you know, they'd be kind of random, more random looking with the crick planting them by carrying seeds and stuff. But, no, nope. they look like they were definitely planted. Of course, they're not very big uh, most of them's dead they're uh, cottonwood trees and they don't get a whole lot of water other than when the creek runs so anyway let's go back up to the property and uh, got a little bit of a trek here it's takes about five minutes to get over here but uh, up and down trying to walk through all the washouts but I'll, uh, I'll rejoin you back over at the ranch okay so some of you might remember uh, last year we had a, a heifer calf born and 
this last Friday we had a little bit of tragedy strike. Um, somehow she ended up uh, getting bloat. Uh, she's right about a year old and she got bloat. My wife came out to feed in the morning. I was at work and uh, she was already dead. Uh, what happened a few hours prior to that, it didn't take long. She was doing fine one uh, one night, you know, that night right before she died, uh, she came out to, the wife came out to feed and, and uh, she came out in the morning to feed again and yeah, it was, it was that quick from being energetic and happy and running around and whatever else and so yeah this past Friday we, we lost our, our yearling heifer and uh, we also lost a couple of chickens too and I'm pretty sure it was probably an owl or uh, we do get quite a few bald eagles and some hawks out here in these trees uh, so I'm maybe thinking that something Something came down and got our little silky rooster and one of the other ones. So, but I guess that's the ranch life and it's the life we chose. It's the life we're going to live and we'll, uh, we'll make do with what we got. Um, we, uh, we, we do have our, our older heifer. She's up been trying to get her bred for quite some time but for some odd reason uh, the bull's not been too interested interested in her so uh, we're we're hoping but we don't know if it's gonna happen or not but we'll know here probably within the next few weeks uh, anyway thanks for checking in and I'm gonna try to bring you guys along for barbecue Sunday Every Sunday we have a barbecue out here, and uh, just uh, the family gets together and we, we all sit down and enjoy a nice barbecue, and we'll either do a, a nice pork roast or, or uh, we did a turkey here a couple weeks ago that we butchered. We uh, butchered one of our turkeys out. He was really good. It was a nice, nice cooked uh Nice slow smoke turkey. Um, so we'll see what we cook up this week, this next Sunday. And uh, yeah, I'll bring you guys along and you can enjoy it with us. Thanks.